Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to grow a mycelium uh, with a very simple method. You can uh, see how it's uh, starting at the boundary of a point cloud and it's randomly adding points there and it's more likely to grow nearby food resources which are represented by these uh, white spheres. You can see once it cannot find any more food, it will at some point stop searching and stop growing. As per usual, you can download some example files on my Procygen website. Down there, there's a download section with various examples and also some code discussion. And you can also support me on Patreon if you like. Let's start with uh, just going through the file real quick. So there are a bunch of points created by a planar patch. And we are going to um, place some random points um, displayed as spheres. And most stuff is happening inside the solver. There are three simple steps. The first step is measuring. So you would want to know whether you are inside or at the boundary of the point cloud. Um, and that way we create attributes such as the normal, the magnitude, some kind of length of this vector and the distance uh, from other points. Then we remap the distance and the magnitude to drive the growing. And you can see here we have a bunch of uh, or we have a random value which then gets asked whether it's uh, smaller or bigger than the magnitude and the distance and then it starts adding points there. So it's basically calculating the a probability whether it's outside and nearby food and then it adds a point one by one. So this is what's happening here. So there's no um, yeah, nothing else. We do not uh, define angles or um, look up uh, other things. It should be enough to drive this. Let's start in a new th scene. I uh, prepared this scene here. It's nothing in there yet. It's just uh, a geometry container called growth. And inside we will need a solver at some point. But let's just start with a patch. So there's a planar patch. I put it on the ground, the ZX plane. We can set it to a circle. And we are using an edge length of 0.1, which matches uh, what I did here. It's a planar patch of 0.01 it is. And therefore we should shrink the scale down to let's say 0.2. You can also use text and use another patch node called planar patch from curves, but I want to keep it simple. So we just use the normal patch and we delete the geometry, but keep the points inside the add node. Now this would be our start. And we now want to um, bring this into the solver. Let's just have a quick look at what's happening here. I removed some attributes, which is optional because the uh, planar patch unfortunately creates lots of uh, things we don't need. So if you want to follow along, just clean the attributes and groups. So that should be identical. And the other things are some random food points. So what we can do is we would just place a sphere. And at the moment it's a polygonal sphere. So let's switch it to a primitive. That way it just gets uh, or it's just a point, which is far simpler. And we can copy that point several times. So we have, let's say, six foot points and we jitter them around, excluding the y-axis. Uh, we should shrink the foot points down and play with different uh, seed values to just um, scatter the food around. Maybe like this. Let's compare it with our um, our points we set up there 
so we should not uh, remove them of course so let's disable remove unused points and remove degenerate primitives other than that we should have now a bunch of seed points and a bunch of food points let's bring them both to the solver the food gets in the first input and the excuse me the seeds get in the first input and the food gets in the second input now inside the solver you can um, sort the inputs a bit when you start with the solver they may look like this so just select them all hold down a and hold down the left mouse button and move it to the right I just have some notes here you will not but you can get a solver just as per usual like that inside the solver we have these three steps the first wrangle would do the measuring so let's name it accordingly measure uh, what we do here is we basically look up the point cloud and ask for the distance to the food which is coming through the second input and once we have that distance we write out all these attributes um, for later use so let's first define a radius r and we need a slider called radius which is a float we can set this to i think 0.1 which um, can be played with later on and we want the maximum number of points that should be looked for so let's just call this parameter points and uh, we're looking for a few points uh, surrounding each point and um, just a quick check but that should be exactly what we're doing here a radius and yeah it's a lot more points inside that radius now there's a function which returns a handle for our point cloud so let's just call it handle and this function is pc called pc open so that way we will be able to search points it has found around this radius and we feed in the maximum number of points so this is not returning an array this is just a handle for that point cloud that uh, what has been found and we can directly filter out an average position using the pc filter function so pc filter refers to the handle and what we want to average out is the attribute p which is our position now what i would also want to know is the distance uh, to the food so it seems i have been using xyz dist for this which is a bit unusual we could also just say pt near or uh, the near point function uh, to look up the food let's just do this uh, xyz dist usually refers to uh, i think polygonal geometry but if it works it works we can do either way now let's write out what we have we first of all want to define the normal which is our position subtracted by the average position of the surrounding points you can activate the normals and you see that these points or these normals are pointing away from its from their surrounding points and also the length is not normalized on purpose because that way i can easier identify the boundary if we had a point here the normal would point away from all the other points now additionally we want to know the magnitude of the vector so we want to know the length of it so the length of the normal would be our magnitude so that way we can really filter out the 
boundary. And we also would like to know the distance to the food. So the dist to these spheres. We can check here whether the distance to the food has also been uh, measured. Our next step would be to remap our values. So we use the attribute wrangle again and call it remap. Of course, you can do could have done this inside the same node, but just for didactic reasons, we will use another node. F at dist will be remapped uh, using the fit function. So let's fit f at dist and now say from 0 to 1, which we could also write as fit01 function would on fit at dist would be mapped to 1.0 and 0.05. So we basically reversed it a bit and I additionally use a power function to modify this distance so it's not linear anymore. So power of 9.1 and that way the distance should be manipulated. Next step would be to play with the magnitude. So this one gets uh, fit from a very narrow so the magnitude would be fit from very small numbers 0.004 and 006 to 0.0 and 1.0. So that way we use this uh, these uh, very short magnitudes and blow it up to uh, up to one. Now the last wrangle would be. Uh, adding new points. So I called this simply grow or under the hood it is as you can see here adding points and lines based on a random value which is um, totally random and ran uh, throws out a different uh, value every time this function is called. So we cannot replicate what it's doing but we also don't have to feed in any things like point number and frame number. And now we just check whether our magnitude and our remapped distance is bigger than these uh, random values inside our random vector. So we just ask if f at magnitude is bigger than the X component of our value and at the same time also the remapped distance must be bigger than the Y component of this random vector. The random vector sits between 0 and 1 so this is why we remapped uh, this with a fitting function to also um, work inside that range. Now when this comparison or oh, this condition has met or has been successful, then we define a offset, which is just the current position, plus this time the normalized normal direction. So that would be a unit vector multiplied by a very small step, 0 0.005 is what I'm using. These uh, values or these magic numbers are referring to the distance between the points and I had to play a bit with this to make this work, but it's definitely uh, a good idea to also mess with these numbers and experiment uh, to get uh, new results. Now I flatten the offset Y component here to make sure the plant is only staying on the ground. You can of course also uh, drive a three-dimensional growth but it will be quite dense and really hard to see what's going on. So I keep it two-dimensional for now but the very same setup works also in 3D and can crawl along surfaces using the XYZ dist function. What we do next is we add a point at the offset position. So you see the first 
random points appearing on the boundary and we want to connect these new points to the points that had been chosen. So what I do here is I add a polyline based on the current point number and PT add. So just to get the idea, this is the first step. You see it has in some very rare cases chosen a few points on the boundary or very close to the boundary and connected these points. And now when we go outside, we can click on, if we want to, we can click on this little watch icon to see this in real time and hit play. Or we can slowly go step by step and see where it's growing to. What I like about this method is that I do not have to uh, define any edge cases or say something like stop if you're nearby another curve. I can just rely on this point cloud lookup to magically push these lines away from each other. Yep, I would usually say thank you for watching now, but there's one more thing we can add. If you like, there's also an edge transport, which uh, can give us the, or, or the transport from root, give us uh, some kind of distance we can then use inside a uh, attribute color and say remap from attribute, and we would bring in this distance and then see whether this has been successful. Uh, it may just be that we have to um, yeah, say total forward and first point it was. So you would define edge network, switch it to first point and say total. And that way we get a visual indication of the uh, growth distance, if you like. Thank you for watching.